Hi, my name is Byron Martin here at Logies. Today we're going to be talking about Hoyers. And the genus of Hoyers, which are members of the milkweed family, are probably some of the best house plants that we grow. They are very um, enduring. Uh, we would call them indestructible. They can withstand tremendous amounts of dryness and do quite well under low light. And mainly that's because they come from tropical forests where they'll go through long periods of dryness in the dry season and they grow in the understory and climb. Most of them are vines, but a few are shrubs. So today we're looking at some of the Hoyas we grow. Um, this is probably one of the more common ones, which is Pubicalyx. And this is an old plant. You can see the um, redness here is caused by being up against the glass. They're on hangers. So it's um, received an awful lot of light. And they can tolerate that, but this was up where there was very little air movement. So um, it did redden the leaves a bit. Um, we also have a little miniature one. This is an older variety. This is called um, Lacanosa, Hoya Lacanosa, with these tiny little white flowers and these small leaves. And they have a fragrance to them which is this one is very sweet, quite sweet. Some of the fragrance varies. Uh, some of it smells like candy like this. Others smells like chocolate. This one here will actually in the evening have a chocolate smell to it. And um, there's a few that are very fragrant. Odorata is one that has the most perfume fragrance probably of any Hoya. So they come in very various sizes. This is sort of the standard uh, flower size that we see. And they come in always usually come in umbels like this. So a few are solitary. Um, and then there's small miniature ones like this Lacanosa, or we have um, larger ones like Archiboldiana or um, Laudenbachii, which has a tremendous flower. It's a little bit more of a challenge to bloom, but the flower, each flower is two inches across. And as I mentioned, many of them have fragrance. Some don't, but many do have fragrances. This variety here, which is a new one, Vitella liana, um, has kind of an off smell to it, so some of them are a little bit peculiar in their odors. As I mentioned, most of them are climbers, and as they grow in tropical areas, um, need temperatures generally above freezing. For some varieties, it's the dryness of winter and cool temperatures that actually help stimulate the flowers on them. So if you can't get a plant to bloom and it's gotten to be very large, try drying it out and putting it in a cooler spot for the winter time and see if that doesn't correct the problem. In terms of their culture, as I mentioned, they're really easy to grow. These are plants that um, are really indestruct indestructible. They do go through periods of dryness and they do need to be um, brought to dryness between waterings to keep their root systems healthy. This is a variety called um, Carii, which is the heart leaf hoyer. Uh, and it, you can see the soil here has become very dry and I can feel the pot is very light. This is the point at which they prefer to be watered. Remember, too much water is the worst thing you can do to a Hoya. So dry them out, water them thoroughly, and um, they should grow like a weed for you. One of the things about Hoyas that makes them such a versatile plant in terms of their growth and flowering is they will flower off of the old spurs. And this is an example of a flower of a flower that has been flowering for many years. You can see the length of that spur and it still continues. Not all Hoyers have this wreath flowering on the spur. Some they drop their spurs. Um, Hoya Lancelotta Bella is a good example of that. It doesn't hold its spurs, but many of them do. And so that gives you, once it starts to flower, you know that you're going to be seeing flowers again on that next cycle of, of growth. Here's a plant that we've had for um, two years now, I think, as a young cutting, and it's come up to flowering size. You can see the bloom forming on this. So during this period of time, this vine wrapped itself around and went off into space and climbed onto this and that. And then you can see if you start unwinding it, it just keeps going and going and going. And what we did is we take that and we pull it back and we wrap it around. And the tip of that got broken off. But um, as you can see, there's another bud that was forming there. This is going to definitely be a spur type. So that vine you'd probably want to leave. Now, if this started to climb out and you had too much of a mass, because this plant can actually sit in this pot for many years, um, decade probably, or even more, or even more. I've had them in pots for two or three decades without repotting them. If it got to be too much, you just simply take those leaves on and chop them off. Remember, that your flowers, if it hasn't flowered, your flowers are going to form somewhere out on that new growth as it's um, growing out, those spurs will start to develop. So you don't want to prune so much that you prune your flowers off, but to contain a plant, um, you do need to cut it back uh, periodically. As far as insects goes, they are 
pretty um, immune to insects. There's a few varieties that tend to have problems. As I mentioned, Lancelotta bella just a moment ago, that one tends to have a lot of um, mite and frit problems. But most of them are pretty insulated to that, with the exception of mealybug. And mealybug, for some reason, likes Hoyas. So be uh, aware that that is an issue. Be observant to your plants. If you do have an infestation where cotton masses start to form in the leaf axis and under the leaves, make sure you spray it. Neem oil works very good on Hoyas. It doesn't seem to hurt the foliage on that. So repeated applications of that with a good fossil sprayer should clean up any problems with an infestation. As in all plants that um, are grown in containers, they do benefit from fertilizer. We don't consider them heavy feeders, uh, moderate. Um, applications of a few times during the growing season is adequate for them. Remember the higher the light, the more feed, the lower the light, the less feed you give them. A granular organic is great if you want to sprinkle it on the top and water it in. As they're usually grown under lower light and more stress conditions, it's better to go easy on the feed with them. But if you want your Hoyas to grow, you do need to feed them. So thank you for watching today. There's a little bit of information on how to grow Hoyas, some of our best houseplants. If you'd like more information, you can go to logis.com.